Hey guys, it's Nick. Thanks for tuning into Long Island Wargaming, and this is going to be Game One at Crossroads GT Spring 2015. And uh, this is going to be uh, my Double Bone Breaker Lord list against Keith's Ogres, uh, a army that he borrowed, but a list he created. Keith on YouTube is Hydralisk Estral, I believe, and he's with the Unplugged Gamers. I will guess. I think so. And uh, it's going to be a pretty good game. And you can also see him against Naren Zaid in Naren Zaid, I believe, game four. So this is kind of a rematch versus Keith, as I played against his dwarves in 2013, Fall Crossroads. One of my earlier battle reports, not that great, lots of stuttering and ums, but if you want to check that game one out, check this in the links below. I wasn't anticipating ogres, uh, there was only a 6% chance of getting a game against them during the entire week, or each game I should say, but I'm playing ogres. Let's get into Keith's list. So ETC is 50% Lord, so he's running two Slaughter Masters and a Tyrant. Um, really no Ward Thieves on these guys for the most part. The Tyrants run in Fencer Blades, uh, Glittering Scales, and the, greeting f the Greedy Fist, which actually plays a role in the game. Uh, we've got a Slaughter Master of the Great Maw and a Slaughter Master of Lore of Death. Uh, one of the guys has the Crown of Command, and the other guy has uh, Dispel Scroll and Iron Curse Icon. So, Death and Great Maw. Two level 4 casters from the Ogres. Pretty crazy gut star when you really think about it. And then you run a Bruiser, a bruiser BSB with the Rune Maw, which is pretty stellar. We've got some Ogres, uh, Ogre Bulls, to fill out the rest of the course since there's a cap on how many points you can get in Iron Guts. And they each have Iron Fist, those little Ogre units. Uh, we've got a nice unit of Man Eaters, six guys. Uh, they are running. Pistols, I believe, and they've got Sniper and Poison Attacks, which is nice. You see that build often. Uh, two Saber Tusks and an Iron Blaster. So a couple of predictions thrown out there from my uh, teaser video. If you want to get into the game, feel free to uh, go a few videos back. But Vince thinks I'm going for a 4-6 win. Uh, everyone else thinks I've got a win, including Paul K, who thinks I'm going to get a big win. And then there's Matt S, who thinks I'm going to get a loss. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thanks for the confidence there. So this is the teaser photo while I go through magic real quick. Level 1 got Warp Lightning, then I have Death Frenzy, Scorch, Crack Skull, and I swapped out Vermintide for a Scatter Leap with my Grace here. No 13th because there's no infantry. Uh, one of his guys got Bajuna, Spirit Leech, Purple Sun, Caress, and the other Slow Master got Bone Crusher, Tooth Cracker, Spy Marrow, and the Unforgivable Troll Guts. Quick little showcase of these models, the Pirate Ogre Warbands. So this is the Tyrant, pretty cool looking. Next we've got our Iron Guts with their scuba diving helmets and their rusty anchors. And here are the heroes, the Tyrant, two Slaughter Masters, and the BSP. So here is deployment as shown before. Uh, I end up getting everything over here on the right because he had a lot of dead drops too with the random man eaters and the saber tusks. So it ends up being that I have some slaves and some guys lost over on the left and then the bunker on the back here. But you see there's actually a hole in my bunker in the middle uh, because the BSB and the Grace here don't end up over there. They actually end up over there in the Storm Vermin because I don't know if this was a mistake or not and we'll see as the game goes on. But as I was deploying I did not want my Grace here bunker, uh, Grace here and BSB in that bunker unit because of the man eaters across the table with poison and snipe. I felt it was only going to be a turn or two before he goes ahead and shoots those heroes. So they end up being in the unit to the right, and you see I get turn one here. I'm not too nervous because the BSB can hide in the corner with the Grey Seer, then I could skitter leap him to where he needs to be. But as long as I make sure that I get my Storm Vermin in, that the uh, Bone Breaker is going to combat and the Seer stays out, I should be fine. And that's the plan. Uh, you can see over to the left, the help hit goes flying forward, which is beautiful. So during magic, he denies Death Frenzy. I go for a Crack's Call, uh, but the Room War prevents it, so I have to do it after the Iron Blaster, but the range is too far away. And then I have a few dice left, in which case I go, I throw two dice at Scorch. This way I can try to get the Saber Tusk that's behind the Iron Gut to take a wound and panic and maybe go off the board this way. I don't have to deal with him redirect next turn. And I roll two sixes, which ends up screwing me because it disables me from using any other of my dice and he's got no scroll, oh he's got scroll, he's got no dice left and I want to just throw a dice or two at Skitter Leap so I can get my Grace Seer to a safe position and that 
Scorch ends up doing a wound to the Saber Tusk. He pests his panic test, and my magic phase is over. So no scare to leave leaves my Gracier in the friggin' uh, Storm Vermin unit. Uh, we go into Ogre Turn 1 here, and you see that the Storm Banner in the bottom left corner is out, and uh, he's going to have to make some decisions here, whether he charges me or not. So he does not charge. Uh, the Iron Gust decides to shimmy me down, and the uh, Saber Tusk goes ahead and makes his way out here as a redirector. I'm not too upset about this because I can just charge him, and as long as I use my free wheel to wheel all the way my left corner, um, all the way as possible, and then move forward, then do my free wheel in. I should be able to get an overrun. I just have to commit to getting my caster out of there with Skitter Leap. I've got three tokens uh, and plenty of power dice, so I'm gonna hope that's that's fine. So on this side of the table, the left flank, we just have um, some guys. Nobody charged the uh, Helped Abomination. The man Eaters might have been alright charging, I think it would have been a good idea, but then again, my initiative's higher, I could have destroyed them. Uh, so the Saber Tusk comes out here, and we spend some time figuring out where the Saber Tusk belongs so that he can redirect properly. Uh, right now, I, he might be slightly closer than an inch, but we agreed that the overrun, or the uh, direction of the overrun will be, I'll move forward and run past so nothing can happen. And this kind of sparks a topic for another video that we'll go through about talking things out with your opponent and figuring out what your intentions are and at one point do you not do that and become super competitive or are you supposed to be a good sportsmanship person or good sport and you know give your opponent the benefit of the doubt and that's a whole other topic and we're going to do a separate video for that so check out the link below on that in his turn he doesn't do too much in magic i'm able to deny spells and then the storm banner helps out with the Iron Blaster and the Man Eaters. So we go on into Skaven turn two. Storm Banner is still going. I do make that charge as described before up on the top right. I wheel all the way to the side with my left flank getting as close as possible. Then once I hit, I get the free wheel to close the door. You can see I'm going to have a beautiful overrun. Uh, the Hell Pit rolls super low, preventing him from hitting the Iron Blaster, which would have been a nice charge. Uh, the Hell Pit uh, to the left charges the Saber Tusk. The slaves and the giant rats try to move up to run interference with the man eaters, but it's going to be a close call. So in magic, uh, I do go ahead and try to cracks call this unit because my Gracie is in the corner, and it's just going to be beautiful if I can get it off and have it go through five ogres, <laughs> five ogres. But now Roomba is awesome, and on a two plus, it is rejected. Um, and there was some issues later on in the tournament, which were still figured out. This was played correctly because it's technically a template weapon, but it's not a template weapon, and blah, blah, blah. I don't know, ETC, but we looked it up, and this was played out correctly. So the room law says I cannot hit him, and I cannot put the template or line template in the direction of that unit. So I go ahead and do it onto the Iron Blaster, Initiative 3 Noblar, he passes. And for whatever reason, I don't get the Leap off, so my friggin' Gracier is about to go into combat with the Iron Guts, which is my fault, I guess, for putting him there in the first place. But, I mean, I should have done what I should have done differently is put these slaves in the middle here, looking back at this picture, behind the hill, which has infinite height, and just not worried about the man eaters because of the friggin' storm banner. But I just got nervous, and that's a huge error that I made. So, let's see what happens with the Gracier. So, back to turn two on the left here. Yes, I kill the Saber Tusk. But not on impact, not on impact, which allowed him to get three attacks, two of which get through and wound without regen. He takes two wounds from the Saber Tusk, which is absolutely pathetic, but at least he's uh, ready to rock and roll. Oh, and the gutter runners are on, apparently. They'll do a single wound to the man eaters, but with the friggin' storm banner, they're kind of useless. And uh, I do kill the saber tusk to the right, the alligator, and I do go ahead and overrun into the iron uh, guts. So in ogre turn two, the man eaters charge the giant rats. I issue a flea, which I thought was a good idea, so that he might fail. But he's got the gleaming pendant, so he has a re-rolls re failure test. So he does redirect into the helped abomination, which I'm not 100% nervous about. But they are man eaters, and they do have impact hits here. And he rolls a friggin' ogre charge. Uh, up in the top, right at the top of the screen there, the uh, Iron Blaster does go ahead and do a charge into the Storm Rune, which makes sense. It's a good idea. It's going to get some impact hits, so hopefully that helps. Flank charge on the Hell Pit over here on the left side of the board. Not too worried about this. And then 
all shit hits the fan with bubble troll guts. He got it off. This is the only spell he got off, but he got it off. So the man eaters and the iron guts and the friggin' hell blaster have troll guts. Yep, troll guts. So remember, the Grace here failed to leave the Storm Vermin twice with no skitter leap. So the greedy fist goes ahead and pounds away on the Grazier. Remember, it has nothing to do with wounds, it has to do with hits. So I end up saving all the hits with my ward saves, but three hits successfully cause me to lose three wizard levels. And I lose three spells, so I'm left with Crack's Call, which is at this point useless. So in hindsight, it's so obvious where the Grace Seer should have been, but you know what, at these GTs, unless you go to these things, you have to make split-second decisions that sometimes end up screwing you, but it's, you know, I'm living with this mistake. So, we do some fighting here, um, shit goes down, essentially characters attack characters, and it's just a mess, uh, a lot of ward saves are being made, regen saves are being made, his guys regen like crazy, remember they've got no ward saves, so I could have destroyed these characters with my characters and storm vermin, but no ward saves, but regens are there. Now the funny thing is the iron guts go ahead and roll all misses, they roll ones, twos, and threes to hit. They got not a single hit, and I am unable to kill the Iron Blaster even though I do so many hits and wounds onto him because he gets every single regen save. Hands down, if there was no Troll Guts, I would have probably won this, com uh, won this combat. But I lost this combat, but I am steadfast. And really, no guys, no Storm Vermin are really removed. Now, an error made by Keith was the fact that he did these combats out of order. He probably should have done the Hell Pick combat first, so he would have overrun. Not anticipating the fact that he freaking killed the Hell Pit, and the Hell Pit did so much damage to this unit, but once again, regen. Regen was super important to uh, my losses here, and uh, just well played spell. Well played. So the Man Eaters go ahead and do get that overrun in there against the unit that will not be able to get Storm, uh, get Death Frenzy due to the fact that I've lost it. I was just going to 6 dice or 5 dice uh, Death Frenzy, and I can't do it now. On the left side, I ended up rolling feed, in which case pff, I ended up rolling ones for wounding, so I only ended up I ended up doing nothing. Do is is guys just just bad, and there's no thunder stops, so it's just it's just a mess. Mm, we go into escape in turn two. I decided it's going to be best if I charge in with my gutter runners because it's not going to affect the help it because the help it's stubborn, but I might be able to get the points for the flank charge and the charge and maybe some poison attacks. So. It's a decision I made because there's actually nothing to shoot at right now. I do do a charge with the sleeves on the bottom just to go ahead and get a flank charge in there and a charge and make it so that he's no longer negating my ranks, I guess. I, I don't know how this all works out, but it was the decision I made. And we will make this very, very long story very short. I lost the combat, and I didn't kill... like I. I killed a few Iron Guts, but you know what? Most of his heroes he kept hidden in the rear ranks, and I dealt with the ones that I couldn't end up killing anyway because they have so many wounds and such high toughness and regen that this ends up happening. So the Storm Vermin are gone. They chase him down. My heroes weren't able to do anything successfully, and the Iron Blaster is still alive. So that's kind of much, that's pretty much the game at this point, but. I still decided to play it out just, just to see what I could do. This clip just shows the fact that the Tyrant is boss, and he is uh, going to go ahead and roll through these slaves. And he does that in Ogre turn 3, so we move to Ogre uh, Scheme in turn 4. And you see the Hell Pit's making his way back over here. It's because he broke the... Uh, he ended up breaking the bulls on the other side with the gutter runners and I tried to commit this guy coming this way to scoop up some points because I mean it's still a help it come on uh, but the gutter runners fail to chase down the bulls and they continue to make charges against them to try to chase them down and catch them and the bulls just keep running and that's just happening on the other side of the battlefield so to breeze through the rest of the game some man eaters charge a help it the help it goes ahead and crushes them he rearranges his guys so that the help it can't overrun into them but eventually we finagle around a little bit and the help it does get in, but the slaves are all dying. I think the Iron Blaster somewhere off on the table gets warp lightninged by my caster before he died. And I end up doing a handful of damage to the Iron Guts, but the Hell Pit Abomination eventually gets reformed against, so he's got four heroes and three Iron Guts left. Which I... is just not enough for me to win. 
On the opposite end of the table, uh, the Ogre Bull eventually rallies and comes back to fight the Gutter Runners, but we end up having a standstill here at the end of the match. So it really comes down to this right here, which is a Help It versus like a thousand points worth of heroes or 1200 points worth of heroes and then a full strength unit of iron guts so that's it ends up being a tabling i end up scooping up a handful of points towards the end of the game to my surprise i thought i was dead but there's no arguing with 1200 points worth of heroes and 450 points worth of iron guts it's it that's it i get tabled i get zero points um so victory to the ogres so what happened here well, apparently I disappointed all of you guys who thought I was going to take a solid win here, and I lost. A few errors. Your caster should never ever be near a greedy fist, no matter what. And I probably should have taken better advantage of that hill there, and left my caster behind there. Well, it is a shame that I didn't take a victory here, just based on the fact that this is the second time I'm playing this opponent. However, well-made, solid ETC... Uh, ogres list here, and the gut star is just a tough thing to deal with, especially with the room wall sitting in there. I got off the cracks call twice, uh, and that in any other game would have probably won me the game hands down twice through that gut star. It probably would have taken a few heroes out and plenty of iron guts, but it is what it is. So uh, check out Naren Zade's video on um, his game 5 against Keith here, and uh, stay tuned for game 2. See you guys in the next one.